Hey there, Python trainer Ruben Lerner here with another question I got from a subscriber to my Better Developers newsletter. And this question is from Doug. And Doug says that he has a file full of time and temperature logs. Um, so every so often, this file gets another line added to it. And on that line, we have a time and then we have the current temperature. So here, I'm going to show you what he gave me in terms of his code. I'm just going to say here, so let's take a look. We have times equals a list and temps equals a list. And then what he does is he goes through each line in the file for a line in open file name. And I define file name up here and I'll show you in a moment what that file looks like. Actually, let me do that right now. So I'm going to just do a head of, let's take a look here. See, it's not that complex of a file structure. But we should know what we're doing before we actually try diving in. So you can see that each line in the file has a timestamp, hours and minutes and then a space, and then a temperature reading. And truth be told, I constructed this file myself with a little bit of Python and Emacs magic. So those temperature readings are not actually the temperature readings. Rather, those are just random numbers between zero and 40 that I generated. So it is not 15 degrees, then four degrees, and 33 degrees, then four degrees, um, at least not, not on this planet so far as I know. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna go through the file line by line. We're gonna grab the current line. We're gonna strip it to get rid of the new line. We're gonna split it. And when you split without any arguments, then that splits on white space, meaning space, tab, new line, any of that stuff. And we're gonna get back, well, two things. We're gonna get the time and we're gonna get the temperature and those are strings. And then what we can do is we can break the time into two parts, the hours and the minutes, get the hours and the minutes there. And if the minutes are equal to zero, zero, meaning if it's a round number, if it's the top of the hour, then and only end do we wanna take the times and temps and append to each one of our lists here. So we're gonna have two parallel lists, a list of times and a list of temperatures based on this file. So we're taking a, I don't wanna say a sample of the file. And so if I run this, what am I gonna get? Well, we can see then, and here I'm using, by the way, F strings, the modern kind of F strings, modern because they're in 3.6 and onward, but modern kind of F string, because if you put inside of the curly braces a variable name with the equal sign after it, then we get this cool thing of uh, variable name equals variable value. And you can see here that there were really only two lines in the file that fit our criteria. At uh, tw on, I guess, 20, it's gonna be, oh, I guess we got, yeah, we got the hour. So at 20 o'clock, meaning, you know, 8 p.m., we got 18 uh, degrees and at 6 a.m. we got 15 degrees. Okay, this sounds good and actually this works. And what Doug's question is, is can we use a generator and even better a generator expression to do all this? And let's go back for a moment, what's wrong with this code, right? And, and at a basic level, it's not wrong, it works. And when you can get your code to work, that's already the first step. That's already the best thing. Because then you can rejigger it and play with it to make it better. So what's wrong with having lists? What, why would we prefer to have a generator? Well, a generator is great if you're going to have huge amounts of data. And if you don't know how much data you're going to be getting, um, then you could potentially be creating lists that are thousands, millions, perhaps even billions or infinite amounts, infinite numbers of elements long. And you probably don't want that. I mean, it's nice to go to IT and say, hi, can you upgrade my system to an infinite amount of RAM? But they tend to frown upon that and they probably don't have the budget for it. So if we use a generator, then we can grab one element at a time and we're never going to fill up our memory. Um, so how would we do this as a generator? Well, first of all, a generator, uh, we can do it as a generator function. Um, and a generator function looks like a regular function, except that instead of returning once, then it's going to return many, many times. So let's turn this here into a regular old function that will return our lists. So I'm going to say here, def temps, or let's do it called times and temps. All right, I'll just say file name here. And then I'm going to set all this up here. And then I'm just going to return this at the bottom. I'm going to say here, return times and temps. And so now if I say times and temps of file name, I get the same thing as before, I get a tuple. Notice, by the way, that when you return multiple things, you put a comma between them, and that creates a tuple, even though it doesn't feel or look like a tuple to many people, but it is a tuple. And so we can get back multiple things. As far as Python's concerned, we're actually getting back one data structure, a tuple, but you and I know that that data structure contains multiple things that we can break them apart. So this is a typical sort of function that will return a list. How would I do this instead as a generator function. Well, what I can do is this. Instead of 
having these lists here. I'm just going to get rid of those. And then what I'm going to do is instead of appending to them, I'm just going to do this. I'm going to say return end of HR and float of stir temp. Wait a second. That's not going to work, is it? Because I'm going to run, I'm going to get back the first tuple of time and temp. But what about the other? We know that there's one more. So we're not going to use return. Instead, we're going to use yield. And now when I run times and temps, what do I get back? I get back a generator object. Putting yield inside of the body of a function changes it completely. No longer do you want to use return. You instead want to use yield. And with each iteration, we're going to get back the next value. So if I say here, g equals times and temps, now I can say next g, next g. Well, now we know there are only two. So the next time I do it, next g, it's going to get stop iteration. Why would I do that? So I can do something like this for time and temp in times and temps file name, print, and we can even say here time equals and temp equals. And it works beautifully. So what did I do here? Times and temps of file name, that returns a generator object. A generator knows how to behave inside of an iteration. It knows how to implement. It implements the iterator protocol. So the for loop here turns to the result of calling times and temps on file name. It says, hey, result of calling times and temps on file name, do you know how to behave inside of iterations? And the answer is yes. So it says, okay, if you're so smart, give me your next thing. And we get back this tuple. The tuple has two elements in it. It's a tuple. Oh, I love the joke. Anyway, we, in, uh, we put assign using uh, unpacking the two elements we got into time and temp. Those are now variables, and we can use those variables inside of the loop body. And so it doesn't really matter how many elements we're going to get back. At any given time, we're only going to have two elements that we've assigned a time and temp. And this allows us to save a lot of memory. We don't have the list there. So this is how we can do it as a generator function. But that wasn't Doug's question. All this is leading up to Doug's actual question, which is, can we use a generator expression, otherwise known as a generator comprehension, to do this instead? And what is that? Well, you can think of it this way. I can say here, uh, let's do this, uh, x times uh, x or x in range 5. And you can see here that this is a list comprehension. And the list comprehension, of course, returns a list. But if I change the parentheses to be round parentheses, now I get back. Now this is a generator comprehension. And look at that. I now have a generator. And much as a regular function returns all of its values at once, and that's it, it's done, a list comprehension returns all of its values at once as a list, and it's done. But, where, but, but at the same time, remember, a generator function returns a generator object. And here we can see that a generator comprehension returns a generator object over which I can then iterate. So I can say here, just copy this for a moment, g equals that. And then I can say for, well, one item in g, print one item. And sure enough, it works just fine. So the question is, can I rewrite this function this generator function using a generator expression? And the answer is mm, sort of. All right, so let's go through what we want to do here. I'm just going to comment all this out. So how I want to do this? Well, I'm going to start with a list comprehension because it's just easier to look at and debug. I'm going to like flop the order of these things. Okay, so what am I going to want to do? Well, I don't, I know I'm going to want to get here. Let's call it time and time and temp. I'm going to make it a tuple for well, now what? Well, for one line in open file name, that's going to stay exactly the same. What if I do that? Well, that's not going to work very well at all, right? Because we don't have time, we don't have temp, except for maybe above. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say here something else. I'm going to say one line and one line. Silly, yes, but it'll work. And sure enough, I now have a list in which each element contains, right, the line and the line, the line and the line. Not what we want. So what can we do about this? Well, let's start off with the fact that we don't want all the lines. We only want the lines in which the minutes are going to be zero. So what I can do is I can say here, if, well, now what? One line split on white space, zero split on colon equals equals zero, zero. Will that work? Uh, not so much. So what did I do wrong here? One line split. Oh, no, and then I need to get one line split. One. So it worked. But whew, that's really, really ugly. And that's like just checking things. And then I'm going to have to do that again in order to get my time and date or my hours and temperature. Watch this. I'm going to say here now, this is how I get the minutes. So I can get the hour this way. 
and I can get the temperature this way. The good news is that if you run this, you have incredible job security because no one will be able to read what you're doing here. No one will understand it. They'll all come to you. Uh, well, you know, unless until they hate you. So there must be a better, nicer way to do this. And this is where we run into some issues, actually, because basically what I'd love to do is assign these values somehow. I want to get time. I want to get temperature. And I want to assign them, but we can't assign inside of a list comprehension because the whole point of a list comprehension is to be functional. And in functional program, we don't assign things. So what the heck am I going to do? Well, it's time for some modern Python magic. You saw it before with the F string and the equal sign. Now you're going to see it again with the beloved and the hated, I guess, walrus operator. That's right. We can use the walrus here. What the heck is the walrus operator? It is also known as the assignment. I should use equal here, I guess, you know, AKA the assignment expression. Assignment is in Python a statement, not an expression. It is not something that you can then pass into. You can't say if X equals five, you can say if X equals equals five, that's a test. But if X equals five is checking on an assignment that just won't work. So we would encounter this sort of thing all the time. I'd say while, right, one line equals open, you know, I could say here something like while, well, let's do this here. Uh, you know, I can, I can say here, oh, I can get input from the user, right? That's a pretty classic example. While uh, S equals input, enter your name. And I can say here, print, you know, hello, name. This sounds great, right? Because we're going to get input from the user, assign it to S. If it's the empty string, the while loop will exit. If it's not the empty string, then we'll print their name. Fantastic, right? No, of course it won't work. It won't work because, as I said before, assignment in Python is a statement, not an expression. It doesn't give a value back, and thus while doesn't know what to do with it. But as of Python 3.8, walrus to the rescue. And now it works great. So I can say Ruben, hello Ruben. Oh no, what did it not like here? Oh, S, haha. -ha. All right, well, that's another reason why it wouldn't work, right? Now I can say here, Ruben. And I can say, oops, if your name is oops, I can say world. And when I press enter, it exits. That's right. Programmers exit when you press enter. Logical. So how does this help us? Well, what if, what if inside of this if statement, I assign something? Huh? What if I say here fields equals one line split? Now, here I'm actually doing it for the side effect. I'm doing it for the assignment. I'm not actually doing it for the test. I mean, this will come back false, and thus we're going to ignore the line if the line is empty. So this is kind of nice in which we get rid of empty lines. But uh, you know, other than that, it's just for the sake of assignment. And then what I can do is I can say here, well, fields zero, comma fields one. Let's see if this works. Oh, it still didn't like it. Why didn't it like it? What's wrong with it? Well, here's where it gets a little weird. All right, here I'm going to like put this down here so you can see. I'm going to use parentheses. Whoa, and then it works great. What the heck is going on here? Because this whole thing is the expression that we are checking. The whole thing. I don't want to get if fields. I don't want to know if that's the case. I want to know if this whole thing returns a truish or a falseish value. And of course, everything in Python is considered true inside of a Boolean context, inside of an if statement, uh, except for none, false, empty string, and empty other things and zeros. So what happens here is, we're taking one line, we're splitting it. That gives us a list. We're splitting a white space, gives us a list. We assign that list to fields. Amazing, right? And then we have field zero and fields one available to us there and we can use it. Aha, but wait, you're saying, or maybe not. Aha, don't we actually want to get the time and the temperature? The answer is yes. Don't we also want to be like filtering so that only if the minutes are zero, yeah, so let's do that. Let's do that second part first. So I want to make sure that the minutes are zero. So I can say here, if, did you know that you can do multiple ifs in a list comprehension? I bet you didn't. I didn't know for a long time. And I can say your fields ends with colon zero, zero. Yeah, it still didn't like that too much. So let's do it here. Oh, oh field zero, fields one. All right, let's, let's get rid of this here. All right. And so I can do, oh, because fields is, of course, a list. That's why I didn't like it so much. So fields zero ends with that. Ha ha. Now we have our time and we have our temperature. So far, so good. 
And yeah, okay, you can quibble over the fact that here it's a string and not an integer, and we have the whole thing, not a part of it. Fine, we can, we can deal with that as necessary. But what we've got now, basically, is we've got these fields, and we've got fields here. But, as I mentioned, wouldn't it be nice to break this apart? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say here, if time and temp colon equals one line split. And then I can do other things. But you know what's going to happen? Oh, it's not really going to work, is it? What's going to, what am I doing here? Let's do this. And let's do here, time and temp. Well, it's not exactly working, right? It's not exactly not working. What I need to do is, it's a little, a little weird. What I need to do is like put parentheses around this because I actually want to take the result from the one line split and assign a time and temp. And then we discover, can't do it. This is one of the limits on the walrus operator. You cannot assign it to that tuple of variables. Just can't do it. Oh, well, unpacking doesn't work there. So I'm going to do a bit of undoing here, right? So I'm going to say here, fields, field zero ends with that. And I can even then say, if I want to, write fields zero split on colon zero. And that'll give me the hour, right? And fields one. And if I really want to, I can even make it into an int. And I can make it this into a float. And so now I have, oops, what did it not like there? Oh, yeah, there we go. Now, this is still not what Doug wanted, but it's super, super close because he actually wanted a generator expression. How do we do that? Let's change it into a generator expression by changing the parentheses. And now I can say the she equals all that. And now I can say for time and temp in G, print time equals and temp equals. And there you go. We got it. So the answer, long story short, to Doug's question is yes. Yes, you can use a generator expression to do this. Is it really worth it? I don't know. I think I'd rather go with a generator function. I think it's a little more flexible, easier to understand. But this demonstrates that all these tools can be put together in really interesting ways, right? Comprehensions or gener either generator expressions or list comprehensions and splitting, splitting on strings and all that stuff and reading from files and the walrus operator, uh, which actually did come in handy here. Um, maybe not the best way to do it, but a, a way to do it. If you have any more questions about Python, you can reach out to me on Twitter via email, or you can join Doug and 19,000 other people who read my Better Developers newsletter every week. Just go to betterdevelopersweekly.com. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll be back soon with more Python questions and answers.